Welcome to Ask Psych Sessions, where we ask some of the best teachers in psychology questions from you, our audience. If you would like to send in a question or an idea for a conversation, please visit bit.ly backslash ask psych sessions. That's B-I-T dot L-Y backslash ask psych sessions, all lowercase, no spaces. And here's our next question. All right, I am here with Eric and Jane Hallinan, and this question is from Jacqueline Ghostman from Twitter. What should our policy be regarding late work? How long is too long? Jane, what do you think? I'm a good psychologist, and I always answer most questions with it depends on. So it depends on a lot of factors. It depends on the high value that the, that the assignment has. If I'm if I've built into the assignment project management as outcome, then uh, late work becomes more challenging. And in those cases, I might accept late work. I know we've had colleagues who, uh, for example, Charles Brewer claimed he never had a late paper submitted over the course of his entire career. Now, I chose to believe him, even though that's kind of an unbelievable claim. Um, but I think um, strategies that I've used to discourage late papers is if someone doesn't meet a deadline, I increase the amount of work of the project. So yeah, you can turn something in late, but here's the additional piece you have to do. And it might be something as simple as uh, write me a two-page paper on your time management strategies and why you let that happen. You're okay. cruel. I am. The point is, they <laughs> yeah. don't want to do that, of so course. am I going to get a lot of late papers? No, I am not. No, that's, that's great. Yeah, that's an interesting strategy. I, I really hadn't thought about it that way. It's called I, response cost. Response cost. I don't know what the name for mine is. I'll give you the 30-second version. For most, uh, other than extenuating circumstances and individual situations, um, being late, it's 25% 25% off of the graded score for 72 hours. After 72 hours, you can't turn it in. Okay. Uh, when I started teaching, I was extremely rigid about all my policies in my course. Um, I don't know why, where that came from, but um, that's how I thought you should teach. And so um, it was, you know, if you turn in late, it's not going to get accepted. My life got easier when I started to really relax that policy. And I realized that I can work with students and I can actually build rapport with them by, um, by um, giving them some more flexibility. So these days, um, if they talk to me ahead of time about it, that's all I really ask, mm -hmm. as long as it's a reasonable uh, request, and then I will accept it late, as long as it doesn't have an impact on another assignment or it won't put them further behind down the road. But just for the sake of being on time, I get that life happens. And that has done so many good things for me personally, um, for my just my mental health, and then just for the rapport with uh, between students and, and myself. Um, when they don't tell me that it's going to be late, um, and then they just turn it in late because I have a learning management system, I mark it a zero, and I put into the text box, I say, did we discuss this being late? I'm sorry, I don't recall oh, this that's conversation. Really, that's really strategic. That's yeah, good. And, and so now they have to come back and, and, and be cognitive. or Yeah, they have to... Uh, uh, understand what happened mm -hmm. and um, they know they're not going to get away with it next time and usually I'll make the exception once they email me back. Mm -hmm. so. But I would imagine you also have students that fade that they recognize that they didn't abide by the rules and so they accept the zero and then don't come and bother you and that's also a good outcome. Yeah, I'd have to think some more about that mm -hmm. but yeah. 